Welcome back to the Park Car Conversation, the series driven here at Frontier Fine Cars, Total Alignment. If you need someone that needs a car, this is the place. I know enough people that have gotten their cars here, and I won't tell y'all something that I don't believe in. I am here for a reason, and so is Shauna. This is our guest of the hour. I'm so thankful that you're here. But before we get started, love lays candles. When we talk about standing our business, guys, if you want to invest in your, your brand and your company, Hit us up. My team will get you sorted out. You can have your product featured here at the Parker Conversation. And enough people are going to see it. Okay? We need to invest in ourselves and keep elevating. with my friend here Shauna this is our first day we met yes. and I heard about her story and I'm like park car need her on the park car <laughs> today's episode we're going to be focusing on cancer very relevant a lot of people in this room watching this episode have been affected myself included and Shauna is a survivor yes would you consider yourself a survivor oh yeah absolutely yeah. um and so without further ado I'm going to let Shauna just Get right into it. Shauna, like, talk to us about your type of cancer, when you're diagnosed, and just kind of like, you know, maybe like the preliminary stages of yeah. what that looked like. So I was 33. Um, it, I was diagnosed January uh, 3rd, January 3rd, 2021. Mm -hmm. So it was during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, my husband and I have one son, and we had decided that we were ready for just another. We just wanted one more and done type mm -hmm. of thing. And um, the pandemic happened, and we put that off because it was just a really rough time, as you, we course. all know, 2020. And so by 2021, the new year, we, we do vision boards, and we made a plan that this is the year we're going to try and move forward. And I got my um, diagnosis days later so because mm. I had been doing... Um, I had been doing the biopsy testing and everything like that after I found the lump myself. And so I wasn't sure what was going on, but I was just trying to think positive and move forward with my life. Mm -hmm. And um, on that day I went in and I got, I was told he's like, yes, it's cancer. Um, very small. So my cancer was early stage Adeno, adema, adenocarcinoma. It's really hard to say. Mm -hmm. um, either way, it's early stage carcinoma, uh, the tumor. So although it was early stage and they were able to remove it from my breast and uh, the areas around it, the cells around that tumor weren't cancerous. It had spread to my underarm, which was mm -hmm. my lymph nodes, which then makes it invasive cancer. Um, everybody's cancer is very different. So I even had to ask them like, Please explain to me like? what my cancer is, because you think early stage doesn't mean chemotherapy and radiation. But in my experience, it, I needed to do that because of the underarm spreading mm -hmm. and the lymph nodes. And that makes it invasive. Um, so for me, I also had estrogen positive tumor. And that is why they wanted to do the chemotherapy for 14 weeks to really kill it. Any chances of it coming back because I am a woman and estrogen is just part of our, our, our make. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, I did 14 weeks of chemotherapy. I went in every two weeks, one for one day when every two weeks. And then we switched my medication maybe about eight weeks in. Mm -hmm. uh, to a different type of chemotherapy, which was a little less rough, thankfully. And then following that, I did four weeks of radiation every single day, every single day, minus the weekends. So um, and it was very short, but you go in, you go in the machine and over time, your skin gets burnt. And yeah, right. Because they're just now killing everything that's left over from the cancer. And mm -hmm. uh, they're taking good cells as well with the treatment. Does it actually physically hurt when you're doing radiation? Yes, it hurts. It was more so the peeling that was happening mm -hmm. on my 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 breast. But it was also my back that got affected because it's really burning you from the mm -hmm. inside out. Yeah. Um, and honestly, though, between chemo and radiation, for me, chemotherapy was the worst in terms of side effects. I really right. would prefer radiation. A right. little bit of tiredness, but it was better overall. Right. right? Um, yeah. So I was 33. I also don't have the gene. I got tested. I don't have the gene. I don't. I have a lot of women in my family. And unfortunately, a lot of them have diabetes. And that's the thing that I always felt like I would have to be careful, to, right. you know, to not get. And I just never imagined breast cancer. So. Right. 
it was really a big shock, really right. big shock. I think there's so many people that hear because we all know someone that have has had cancer, some type of cancer, yeah. some kind of cancer, and we always hear radiation, we always hear chemo, right? But we don't often, even for myself, I never really like taken like what it is, right? It's like what e what is even chemotherapy? Yeah. If someone is doing chemotherapy, what does that look like? I'm happy you said that because I, that's how I felt. I just felt like. He explained it to me when I was there and he even talks about mastectomies where you can just take off your boob, uh, you know, because it might come back and things like that. And I just broke down crying. I just broke down crying in the off uh, in the office because I think that's when it got real for me. I was mm -hmm. like you. I don't know anything. You, you have cancer. You hear chemo. Um, you lose your hair. For me, I was just like oh, I had locks um, at the time for six years. And so I was just really enjoying the natural phase. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, so I'm going to lose my hair. Mm -hmm. Right. That's like all you know about it. And yeah. then when I really got in it, it's just so much more, right. The appetite, the, the tiredness, the depression, yeah. I struggle with depression, and anxiety, just naturally. And then, so I went through a really rough time after the diagnosis. Right. And I think because I tried to tell myself it's okay, it's okay. Yeah. You know? Um, and then I got that bad news and I kind of spiraled. Right. Right. Is, is chemotherapy, is it like a pill? Oh, so is chemotherapy, a... everybody's chemo is different. Okay. Um, so there's something called the red devil. <laughs> uh, they call it that because it makes you really sick. Um, she so said you, that with a smile on her yeah, face. Yeah, sorry. No, no because I, I, I said that because I don't remember the real name. Sorry. Mm. I don't know the real That's name because right. um, there's actual names for different types of chemotherapies. Right. So you go into the chemo lab and you're set up to an IV. I okay. got a pick line. So I didn't know anything about a pick line either until they told me you're going to need the pick line. So what that was is something that stays in your arm even when you're not um, doing chemotherapy. So I would have to figure out outfits to hide this. Mm -hmm. um, I still have the mark, black mark from it. It's um, a tube inserted in your veins so that when I go to the chemo lab, they they hook up the IV, they put the medicine, they give you the, um, the they hydrate you. Mm -hmm. And so you're pretty much sitting there for maybe 40 minutes or so based on whatever you're doing. And I'm just sitting there mm. and it was pandemic. So I was alone. Mm -hmm. Usually you might have someone be able to sit there with you. And so you sit there, you can be on your phone, you can watch laptop, whatever you want to do, but you got to sit attached to the IV. Yeah. Um, and sometimes you have to take a pill before the chemotherapy. Mm -hmm. um, that is just to help with certain side effects. And then you do the chemotherapy, you go home, they instruct you to rest. And the next day I would inject myself with something to help with the white blood cells. Mm. Uh, yeah. So it was just a lot. Um, and I was younger. My, my oncologist told me because I'm younger, I can do the injection at home myself because mm. it's just a lot to leave again yeah. after you're already tired to go and get that done. So it's just so much more. It's so much more than you think. Yeah. yeah. I don't know who needs to hear this today, but if you walk into Frontier Fine Cars or fill out a form online and tell them that the park car sent you, you will get $500 towards a down payment of your car off the bat. This is for the people with no credit, with bad credit, working on your credit. You will not get denied. They work out the best low interest rates, low payment plans. They have an extensive fleet of vehicles. But if you see a car that's not there, they will outsource it for you just to ensure that you have a seamless process. I personally would not steer y'all in the wrong direction. I know enough people that have gotten their cars at Frontier Fine Cars. So from us to you, enjoy the rest of the episode. And as we said, like some people, you just think of chemotherapy and radiation, but we don't really think about all the side effects right yeah you get thrown I mean, into it the nausea like the just the loss of appetite yeah, that people yeah. really suffer I, i've heard a lot of people there's a stigma um people who do have cancer they're like the chemotherapy is going to kill me right I'd rather just try to do like a natural i remember i looked path. at mom i said i don't know what they're doing to me mm -hmm. i don't know what they're doing to me i just want to stop i yeah. don't like this right i'm gonna cry <laughs> Yeah. Listen, if, if you got to cry, it, that's a, it's a journey. I went through a lot while I was going through it. Like yeah. I had to go to a hotel just to get, um, we had like a plumbing issue, emergency issue too. Mm -hmm. So I was going, I was fine going home in my house and feeling comfortable. But then in the middle of my treatment, we would have to go to the hotel mm -hmm. until everything was done. And it was a very mm -hmm. long time for them to repair it. Mm -hmm. So I was even more miserable. I had my son and um, even though I had the support, it was just rough. And how, chemotherapy was just rough. I wanted to stop. And my, they were like, no, they're like, that's no. That's what a lot of people yeah. opt to do. I a lot of people stop. opt to just stop. They're yeah. like, let's just run the yeah. course. Let me do a natural path. And if this is not yeah. what works, it's not yeah. in my plan, right? Yeah. No, I just, I feel like I was just, I felt like I was just, um, yeah, like it feels like you're, they're killing you. Like you just feel so 
week almost yeah. and i understood well, that it was you. good for me good things and bad things right they're killing, they're killing so that's why it's so bad right. is they're killing the good and the bad right they're killing everything within you just to make sure that right. they get all the cancer right. but i just feel like it was just so overwhelming and i wasn't even thinking um you know logically in terms of like oh maybe i'll do a natural i was just like i just want to stop like i just felt i just felt like i said depressed and so down and i, I had no control yeah. even though i knew it was good for me at the time right. um and and that's what i went through as well i also felt like with my own story it took me a while to really just accept my own story because I was like why am I so down when women lose their breasts mm -hmm. I had a little lumpectomy I have a little scar mm -hmm. it's fine you know I'm married I have a great husband and it's just like I'm not worried about those things but I don't know why I just downplayed my own story if, mm -hmm. if that makes sense like I was just like I think probably it's all new to you yeah it, it was just lot, all new to a lot, me like overwhelming yeah mm -hmm. and I just felt like you know some women lose their breasts and that's just so sad to me and I so instead of like looking at it as like a blessing or mm -hmm. you know my situation it was just really confusing yeah. for me to finally grasp what was yeah. happening and um, I was really dealing with the loss of not being able to have my second child when I wanted when I had just decided to and um, I had to do uh, egg freezing so the fertility process Wow. And so I did the teaching where they tell you how to inject yourself and I would come off the phone. It would be like a Zoom meeting. I would come off the Zoom meeting and I would just start crying. And yeah. I was crying every day, yeah. every single day. I can imagine like life still re resumes, even though exactly. you have cancer. Yeah. right? So yeah. like you said, how old was, it, was your son? My, my son was around four at the time. Yeah. yeah. So you still have to be mommy. You yeah. still have to show up. You still have to be at work. Yeah. And then in the back of your mind, you have this monster that you're fighting that's trying to take you out. Yeah. But you still have to keep going. Yeah. Um, I, I spoke to, with my mom about it before we came here. And I've never actually showed this public or spoke about it publicly. My mom was diagnosed with cancer in the summertime. Oh, wow. This previous summer. Um, and thank goodness, by the grace of God, it was, you know, a cancer that was able, they were able to remove it. Uh, she didn't have to go through chemo. She didn't have to go through radiation. Right, yeah. But she was suffering. Like, you could tell, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so as a result, they cut her voice box so her voice like doesn't sound the same. Yeah. So I know the other day, cancer? Uh, thyroid cancer. Thyroid, okay. Yeah. And so she was really frustrated the other day. She's like, my voice, yeah, you know, yeah, she yeah. couldn't hear her voice. I'm like, mom, you see how God gave you another chance. Right. You know right. I mean? Maybe God yeah. just wants you to be in a season of quietness. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because it could have been a lot worse yeah. because we didn't have to go through right. chemo. We didn't, but yeah. that, that wake up, it came out of nowhere. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I can imagine, okay, 33, you have a yeah. four-year-old son. It's not just you battling this monster, no, it's not, right? Everyone yeah. calls it the big C. We don't like to talk about it. Right. What did that look like for your family? Because everyone goes through it with you as well. I had a lot. Exactly. They really do. I had a lot of support from my husband, my mom, who I I lived at the time with right. at the time, and my son. That's who we li I lived with. Yeah. So I had a lot of support just from them as the adults taking care of him because they know I'm sleeping, I'm weak, mm -hmm. um, or I'm just depressed in a bad spot. I also have a great sister who really helps. My son loves her, mm -hmm. auntie. So... Yeah. She really helped to come take him out, especially the hard times in the hotel. Yeah. Um, she helped to come take him out and, you know, give me a break and then at least let him be able to, like, go to the play place, do the things I couldn't do with him at such a young age. And he obviously didn't know anything going on. He was just right. so young. And I have a lot of mom guilt even now when I'm just feeling tired, laying down, just feeling like a lot of that imagine. time with him was wasted because I was sleeping or. Um, but I I want to just say like you have a lot of support from your friends and your family everybody like cares for you loves you they don't really understand everything you're going through as well and they they really want to hear from you but it's hard for you to even articulate because you're mm -hmm. also learning like what mm -hmm. the heck's going on with me mm -hmm. um and it's a very internalized experience um even though you have a lot of support it feels so lonely mm -hmm. it really really does it feels yeah. so lonely and then i also had the pandemic that made it even Another worse layer. for me because we were already yeah. recovering from everything that COVID brought. Yeah. And I was just, like I said, I was doing my vision board trying to move forward and then another bomb. Right. right. So I, I, I totally can relate to that because when my, when my mom was diagnosed, like she was always, she was battling like Graves disease and all these different things. And I'm like, mom, man, come on, let's go to the grocery store. And she's like, I'm not feeling good, you know? Yeah. And it's just like, it's true. It probably really was an isolated experience because her body itself yeah. was being attacked yeah. from the outside. I couldn't really see the depth of like maybe the severity of what was going on because it was on both sides, um, you know, of her, the thyroids. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like now in retrospect, I look back, I was like, man, maybe I was a little rough with her during that season. Like she really was going through a lot. Right. And, you know, as, as someone who is supported, I want to be as catering as I could right. for her. 
but I still had no extent or a knowledge of the extent of how she was feeling inside. Mm-hmm. Right. You know what I and mean? And as a mom too, she's probably not going to always tell you, like she's yeah. probably trying to be strong yeah. rather than expressing to you. Yeah. Like, everything. So this is one of the things. And my friends always tell me, they're like, Jafina, you're such a freak. I don't know why you keep doing this to yourself. On social media, I always follow cancer pages. A lot of kid cancer pages. And I always tell people, I'm like, I think this gives me like a grounding. Say like, wow, I, my, my world is so big and all my problems are so big. And I boom, I go online and there's like this five-year-old yeah. um, that's like battling. Like, you know, like last season I followed one. She passed away. Indy Lou, if you know, you know. And, and now there's, you know, there's more oh, children that I follow, yeah. right? Um, but that's one of my biggest fears. And so you said you were 33. Mm-hmm. Like I'm about to be 30 next month. I think in my life I have all this time. You know, things are going up for me. And then boom, out of nowhere, something can come and just, you know, yeah. God forbid, but it happened to you, That's right? How it feels, like yeah. bring us through like that kind of emotion. Like how did you handle, because there's someone out there that's going to watch this that's kind of going through what you're going through. They might have just gotten a diagnosis. Like right. what did that look like for you? How did you manage the emotions? Or if you did manage them? Um, I did it. <laughs> it was very rough. Uh, it started with, I was grieving the fact that I couldn't have another baby. Mm-hmm. I was that person that was like, I definitely want all my kids by 35 or by a certain age. No problem if you want to be an older mom. I just, you know, the whole God laughs when you have plans. Yeah. So I just had my plan. I want to have my kids, uh, you know, born and done with by yeah. 35. Yeah. And so I grieved a lot from that process. Um, rather than looking like, oh, I get to freeze my eggs and it will be okay. And in the future when it's time. No, the doctor told me you're going to be on these medications for five to 10 years because the estrogen. So we have to suppress all the estrogen as much as possible. Wow. And that's when I bawled. This was my oncologist appointment. That's when I bawled because I didn't even realize that this was now going to affect my opportunity to have children on my own time. Wow. Um, at least for so long. I thought, okay, let me do my chemo and be done and move on. And then he's like, no, because five years of it recurring is, and we learn that as you go. I didn't realize that cancer comes back. And if that makes sense, like I didn't realize I wasn't thinking of that. Ever, yeah, yeah. Right. Like, and I does feel it like always come back treatment. more aggressive? I've heard that like, if it comes back, oh it's gosh, more... I don't know, but I don't know. Mm-hmm. That's a and good question. And I hope question. you never do know. No, I know. I hope I never I hope know. Never and, I, and that's what I battle with today. Like I'm a survivor, but I'm, you know, in the back of my mind, I'm constantly worried about it recurring maybe. And I'm still young. So it's like other cancers can happen. A lot of times after 60, you know, you just, your body breaks down. It's not the same. So I'm just like, wow, I've already went through all of this. I just, you know what I mean? I just feel like it's a burden, if that makes sense, being so young, going mm-hmm, through it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also thought about the kids because I was like, if I feel like this in my big age, like these little kids, I like I just I pray for them because it must be so rough. It must yeah. you know what I mean being so young. Yeah. And even the um the elders that I would see there, you know, they're very frail and they were getting yeah. it um more frequently than I was. Mm-hmm. I was told that I was doing it every 2 weeks because of my age. So the older you are, you're there more often. Yeah. So they're constantly being broken down and yeah. um yeah. And that's the other thing. I felt like, well, chemo's supposed to be good for me and save me. Why like why can I felt so like my faith was just off. I just felt like, why can't I look at this in a different light? I'm over that now. I'm over that. But yeah, I think that's a very realistic (laughs) side that someone out there who does have cancer, who just got a diagnosis. That's very realistic that you might go through that period of just like, why is this the process? Or like, why can't I look at it like a grain of salt? Well, maybe, you know, I still have this yeah. part of my body and I didn't have to remove right. like you said I didn't have to remove my breasts like why but yeah. also you're also battling something very scary and unknown to your body yeah so you know don't give yourself a little yeah. grace if you're watching this you know yeah. someone who has That's cancer true. give yeah. yourself a little grace it's it's very intense and with childhood cancer because I follow so much pages mm-hmm. I think like one of the most tough things to witness is that children still get the same treatment as adults like there's only like 3% right. of all the funding that go into, I think that's a statistic that I've seen, correct me if I'm wrong, don't hate me for it, but it's like 3% of all the the research that goes into cancer funding, only 3% goes into children, childhood cancer. Oh, wow. um, so children are essentially given the same type of radiations and chemotherapy, which is a lot harder on right. children, oh my right? It's like go, adult body, but children, right? So a lot of the, the chances of survival for children is um, a lot more slim which is just terrifying to be honest. Yeah. Like as a parent, that's terrifying Absolutely, um, yeah. because this, it just, it does come out of nowhere. It robs us of so much joy and peace It does out of yeah. nowhere. 
It's true. And, and so for someone who's watching this outside, what would be your you know best advice for someone in terms of like support? Is there support groups or anything that helped you in your journey um, to or even just in recovery now? Yeah, well, I did. T I got reached out to by Tiger Lily Foundation. It is American, but I got I was a patient, uh, patient, patient panel like we did the patient panel and we talked about symptoms and things like that um in a zoom meeting and so I got to just share a little of my story and I just remember just saying like I wasn't sure if I wanted to because I've, I felt like maybe you had to be ready and I remember just telling them like you don't have to be ready you don't have to be mm -hmm. ready just talk talk about it especially to people who have cancer because I feel like um I should have done that sooner um and just and people who were newly diagnosed were able to join the Zoom meeting and ask us questions because we had already gone through the experience. And I think that's the best thing because you have, like I said, you may have a lot of great support around you, but no one will really truly understand your journey, even if it's a different type of cancer or whatever, um, than someone else going through what you've been through. So it was all breast cancer patients right. um, specifically. But like I said, some people did get the mastectomy. Some people mm -hmm. um, had one breast left. Some people, you know, had way more invasive cancer which means even though they're doing chemo, it's not saving their life. It's just uh, prolonging, prolonging yeah. it. And that's so, what we call terminal, yeah. right? Yeah. Terminal. Yeah, exactly. Does stage four mean terminal? Stage, well, that's the other thing I would suggest is why you should do these support programs is because you, I learned a lot about other cancers. Mm -hmm. And so stage three and stage four can be terminal. Mm -hmm. um, but... Uh, everybody's like there can be miracles like everybody's story is oh, yes. different God some is, people God were like final I was stage three and I survived it whereas the the notion is stage three and stage four you're just prolonging your life as long as you can but it's just too far gone um yeah I think it's called metastatic hmm. breast cancer that one is usually mm -hmm. you're just prolonging yeah. it's very rough yeah. Yeah. I've lost a lot I've lost a lot of aunties actually to breast cancer oh really yeah it's, it's something that runs in my family so like someone's watching this as a female, I mean, we we do our, our checks. Is that just something that was like natural to you? You yeah. always checked? So I just feel like my self-care honestly saved my life because I'm very into self-care. And I was looking at my underarms and I was like, oh, I don't know why. I don't know if that was also a sign of my cells, something going on with my cells. But I was like, oh, I don't know why. It's like, you know, some like black just black markers wasn't here. So I started to exfoliate my underarms. Mm. And in that... I felt something really hard, very small, but really hard. And I really don't think I would have felt it like, you know, like the breast tissue is pretty. Um, but I don't think I would have felt it if I wasn't doing that specifically, because the way it, where it was, it's better when you lift. I lift up my arm for you to feel the tumor. Mm -hmm. So when I was doing that, I, I was like, tell my husband, I'm like, feel this. And he's like, oh, it feels really hard. And it was the pandemic. So it took me a I called the doctor, but it took me a week to even like get an appointment to go in just because mm -hmm. of everything going on. Mm -hmm. um, so pretty much after that, like I was like, OK, like I don't have the gene. It's going to be OK. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I, I think yeah. now I do do the breast checks, but no, that wasn't my story. I wasn't breast checking and, fi and found yeah, it. Yeah. So it is important now. If you know how, do you follow any pages that tell you how? I mean, I don't. But now that if you're watching this, yeah. I don't know who needs to hear this, but body examine yourself. Yes, yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Especially in Canada, free healthcare doesn't mean great healthcare. It just no, means free no, healthcare. No. We gotta, you have to advocate for your own health. So sometimes you'd be like, hey, something's off. Mm -hmm. Even if they say it's fine, you need a second opinion. I'm still very grateful, like, especially when talking with the Tiger Lily Foundation. Yeah. And a lot of them were American. A lot of them got like the phone call, like a phone call about their like their diagnosis. Yeah. She's like, I was at work. I had to take the call and I got found out I had cancer. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. You yeah. know, like I couldn't imagine getting a phone call yeah. with that, like not even being yeah. called into the office. Yeah. So um, it was a, it was a lot more stuff I was hearing in America. And like yeah. they had to get second opinions and change their doctor when the doctor was like, I don't remember your story. Can you remind me? Like, you know, we know that they see a lot of people, but mm -hmm. it was just it should be a personalized mm -hmm moment when yeah. you're seeing your oncologist yeah. and sometimes I do feel like they can be very nonchalant yeah. or they're just used to it you're just another person and like this is like real life for you this is like yeah. real stuff going on my, yeah. my mom was literally on the way out like yeah. she was dealing with you know all her specialists and they were just like you know what before we like end your journey with this specialist let's do just one more overall check and then that's when they found wow. it, you know, but that could yeah. have gone undetected if if they had if her doctor didn't or specialist right, didn't right. advocate for that. Wow. If you were to say something to cancer, like look cancer in the face and tell cancer something, what would you oh, tell cancer? Oh, man. I'm allowed to swear. 
Swear, girl. This is the Parker conversation, and everyone Fuck here. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck cancer. I'm sorry, sorry, I can't be any deeper than that. But fuck cancer, it really it robs you of a lot of things. It robs you of your joy. It just, mm-hmm. it's just it's scary. Know, it's scary, and it it puts you in a dark place. Mm-hmm. It really does. Mm-hmm. And you know, you can get on the other side of it, but you always be scared too. You know, yeah, you always be afraid. I'm having to go through that again. I just feel like I couldn't imagine going through that again. Mm-hmm. I'm just happy to be here with, you know, my family and my son and uh, move forward. But I also have a lot of mom guilt now mm-hmm. that I had to go through therapy to really heal from. And I know the day is going to come when I even have to explain that moment in time sure. to my son. Sure. Mm-hmm. And, you know, now he does ask questions like a sibling and things. So it's mm-hmm. triggering. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. It's actually even triggering hearing you like speak about it. Being, sorry. you know, th- don't be ever sorry, right? As a mom myself, it's like, you, like I said, you, you always dread the day or the, you know, God forbid, but that's yeah. something that comes in, in your path. Like, what would you do? Yeah. And it, it, the, the outcome is, like when I said, I had a lot of aunties that passed away from breast cancer. They, they did leave a lot of my cousins behind. Yeah. At young ages, you know, my my kids are about to be six this year, but I've had cousins that lost their mom at 14 when they still need wow. their moms. Right. You know, a lot of you, you still need people around you. And so, like, the, is there any silver linings that cancer has taught you that you'd be able to also say to cancer, you know, like what you've taught me? So cancer has taught me to really, really just live for myself now because I just remember being in my sick bed, I would say, because I'd be feeling so horrible laying down, just wishing I could just live. Like the like, like little things you take for granted, you know, you get invited somewhere, you're like, oh, I'm not going today, you know? And the one time you feel like you want to go out, you're not, you don't have nowhere to go. Mm-hmm. So I just said, I'm going to live. I'm just going to live yeah. my life. Mm-hmm. And I just made that promise to myself. I'm just going to live my life when, it, when, I, when I feel better because health really is wealth. It really is sure. wealth. And for me, with that, it I worked I worked uh, a career job for many years with the school board um, for about 10 years. And I was doing a side hustle of cleaning my, my, my business. And I was just really not happy in the school board. And I think after going through that experience, I said, I'm not going to do things I'm not happy with anymore. I'm going to sure. live for me. And I'm, it's not about money or stability anymore. I don't want to blow up my life. But I said, I'm not not going to do something I don't feel good with. And now I just do my cleaning company. I just do my cleaning company yeah. full blown and I'm living for me and it feels good. And I feel like that I do have to give to cancer because I don't know if I would have made that choice to leave a pension, to leave stability, to leave something I was once passionate about working with children and youth. Right. Um, but it was just at a burnout phase. And I just feel like that was the most highest way of saying you might have to go through a rough time now, but I'm helping you to get to where you want to be. Yeah. And I feel better about a lot of things yeah. that I've been able to do. Yeah. Um, I also have a lot of low, to- like I have low tolerance now. Like I just don't, I don't have the tolerance for a lot of things, yeah. um, but it can be a good thing. It's yeah. not a bad thing. Yeah. yeah. It's a good thing. So there are things that I'm realizing now when you can see yourself outside of that, mm-hmm. um, that maybe I wouldn't have made certain moves if I didn't go through that mm-hmm. sure. um, and thankfully come out a survivor. Right. right. So I, I, I think if someone else was to watch this, when, when death looks at you in the face, some things about your life is going to change. Yeah, of course. The things that you don't want to do as much, you know, you yeah. realize, you know, a lot of people put pride in maybe the status, the wealth that they own. And when sickness comes knocking at your door, like you said, well, health is really wealth. Right. You know, if that comes knocking at your door, nothing else matters. And so the things that really matter are, I would presume, the people that you love the most, experiences. So yeah. live for right now. Yeah. And I'm so thankful that you were here to share your story. When I heard your story, I'm like, nah, this is a parked car conversation story. <laughs> because cancer is something that like, you know, people, always, they, they call it the big C. You don't even like yeah. to call the word. Yeah. You know what I mean? And as someone who has cancer on both sides of my family, it's very prevalent. Like when we go to the doctors, you know, I, I think yeah. that's always something I try to cancel it because I don't like negative energy. I always say cancel it, cancel it, cancel it. 
But in the event I was ever to face it, mm -hmm. um, people like you who are able to like give you the strength and you've gone through it and you've had certain tools, I'm appreciative because someone out there, one I don't wish it, but I'm, I'll be here for you. you like, know? you know, yeah. And I, when I was at the oncologist, I saw a friend and she's actually from the States, but she, her mom was like, no. So she was there. Yeah. And she's like, can my mom call you sometimes? Because she's scared. And I was just like, wow. Of course, you know, because yeah. I go I go once a month to the doctor still to do the injection, to suppress the estrogen, to get um, to talk with my doctor to make sure the medicine is not affecting my blood in any way. So mm -hmm. it's still going like I still have to dedicate a time to go uh, once a month. Right. And I saw her and it just made me feel better um, knowing someone like I did say the patient supports help. But just knowing someone and saying, like, of course, I will help you if you need yeah. it. Like, let her call me. And of course, she's scared. Yeah. I understand. And yeah. it just reminded me. And I was able to even just tell her, like, be selfish. This is a time for you. You like you got to it's very internalized. Right. So you got to be selfish. And this is a time for you to take care of yourself, yeah. especially because she's a, a, a mom, an older lady. So yeah. she just she's really gives for yeah. everybody. Um, yeah. So I really that was really outside of me, like taking control of my life and owning my business. That is another thing that I like, being able to meet someone who I feel like I can really, truly just help in any way I can yeah. just by sharing the story and saying, I was once scared too. You'll be OK. Here's yeah. what to expect yeah. or, you know. Girl, there's power in sharing your story and someone yeah. out there is going to watch it and they might reach out to you and be like, honestly, I'm scared right now also. Uh, you know, they're in the same situation or, you know, have know someone that in the same situation. So I'm yeah. very thankful. God is going to continue to give you the strength. He's brought you, you through the hurdle once. You know what I mean? And it's not done yet. He's still with you. Yes. And I, I just wish you on your journey. And the one takeaway I will say that I got out of this is that I can understand it's probably very isolating for people when Absolutely. you do get diagnosed. Yeah. Find somebody who, or it's support groups yeah. that has been diagnosed with the same kind of cancer mm -hmm. that you can experience and share experiences with and like know like what what symptoms are normal or not normal or concerning you know what i mean so yeah. just even something to expect because i remember being very afraid about the pick line because yeah. like, they what they go in but you don't feel yeah. anything and that's why i want to talk a little bit more about this now because that was one thing when i was diagnosed i felt like i didn't hear anything about it i didn't see anything yeah. i know there's a lot of probably instagram stuff yeah. about it but yeah. at the time it was just very foreign to me yeah, yeah. i'm so grateful Y'all are grateful that Shauna has blessed us with these words. <laughs> I'm so thankful. And I just, on your journey, listen, we're all here for you. Continue you. to keep going. You look great. And Thank I guess you. the realest part about it is that not everyone that's been sitting in your position has made it out of the situation. Right. 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 A lot of people that I'm we thankful. know. I'm thankful. Right. And so if you need us here at the Parker Conversation, one conversation at a time, real people, real experiences, real life, also real love. So I appreciate you. Thank you so Peace. much. Ha, ha, ha.